Every single day we're faced with moments that test our patience and rattle our calm. Whether it's a traffic jam when you're already late, a co-worker's irritating habits, or your phone battery dying in the middle of an important call, life seems full of these little battles. It's not just about these minor irritations though, it's about how we respond to them that shapes our days and ultimately our lives. Today we're diving deep into the ancient wisdom of Stoicism, a philosophy that teaches us not just to survive these moments, but to thrive in them. Stoicism provides us with the tools to transform daily frustrations into opportunities for personal growth and inner peace. By the end of this video, you'll not only understand why these principles have influenced some of the world's greatest minds for centuries, but you'll also have practical strategies that you can apply right now, today, to start living a more resilient and fulfilling life. So let's embark on this journey together, exploring how the calm logic of Stoicism can help us control our reactions, cultivate serenity, and bring about profound personal transformation. If you appreciate what we're diving into today and want to keep learning together, do me a simple free favor by hitting the subscribe button and make sure you don't skip any part of the video to get the full transformative insights we're about to explore. Let's get started. Lesson number one, recognizing anger as natural. It's important to remember that everyone feels angry sometimes. It's part of being human. But here's where Stoicism steps in with its profound wisdom. Stoicism teaches us that while we can't always control what happens to us, we can control how we respond. This is pivotal in transforming our relationship with anger. Think about it. When something goes wrong or someone frustrates us, our first instinct might be to react with anger. But what if instead we paused and considered this reaction? Stoicism encourages us to see these moments as opportunities to practice virtues like patience, understanding and resilience. By acknowledging anger as a natural emotion, we set the stage for learning how to handle it more effectively. The Stoic philosophers like Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius often discussed the concept of not being swayed by external events, but instead focusing on our internal responses. They believed that our emotions, including anger, come from our judgments about events, not the events themselves. So when we feel angry, it's often because we're placing a particular value or judgment on what's happened. This understanding opens up a powerful opportunity for us. Each time we feel anger rising, we can ask ourselves, what judgment am I making about this situation? Is there another way to view it? This is not about suppressing or denying your anger, it's about understanding it. By getting to the root of what triggers our anger, we can start to change our responses. For instance, if you get cut off in traffic and feel the anger bubbling up, recognize this as a chance to examine why you react this way. Is it really the action of the other driver? Or is it your belief that your route should be obstacle-free? Moreover, acknowledging anger helps us to empathize with others who might also struggle with their emotions. This empathy can deepen our connections and improve our interactions. It's about compassion, both for ourselves and for others, as we navigate the complexities of human emotions. Lesson number two. Focus on what you can control. This idea is at the heart of Stoic philosophy and is incredibly liberating once you truly grasp it. Think about it. So much of our frustration and anger stems from situations or people we simply can't change, no matter how much we might want to. The Stoics, like the wise Marcus Aurelius, taught that the real power lies in recognizing the difference between what we can control and what we can't. You control your thoughts, your decisions, and your actions. That's it. Everything else is more or less out of your hands. Other people's actions, the weather, the past, and much of the future. But here's where it gets interesting. 
by focusing on our own reactions and attitudes, we reclaim a tremendous amount of power. Instead of wasting energy on the uncontrollable, we invested in what we can actually influence. Let's make it practical. Say you're working on a group project and someone isn't pulling their weight. It's easy to get frustrated, right? You might even feel your temper rising, but ask yourself, what part of this situation can I actually control? You can't make your teammate work harder, but you can control how you respond to the challenge. Maybe it's a conversation about expectations, or perhaps it's reallocating work within the group. By shifting your focus like this, you not only reduce your own stress, but also open up more constructive ways to address the problem. Another aspect of this stoic principle is accepting that some things are just beyond our control. This acceptance doesn't mean resignation. It means understanding where our power truly lies. It's about not letting external events dictate your peace of mind. For instance, if you're stuck in traffic and you're getting irritated because you're going to be late, pause and think, can I control the traffic? No, but what can I control? Your reaction. Maybe you turn on an audiobook or some calming music or use the time to think through your day. The beauty of focusing on what you can control is that it gradually builds a stronger, more resilient mindset. Over time, you'll find yourself less shaken by life's ups and downs because you know where your responsibilities lie and where they don't. This isn't about suppressing your feelings, but about channeling your energies more productively. Lesson number three, practice mindfulness. This is about being fully present in the moment, aware of where we are and what we're doing, without being overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around us. This aligns beautifully with Stoic teachings, which emphasize awareness of our thoughts and actions, and maintaining control over our reactions to external circumstances. So why practice mindfulness? Because it helps us to pause between our experiences and our reactions to them. By becoming more mindful, we can choose responses that align with our values and goals, instead of getting swept away by emotions. This is particularly useful when dealing with anger or frustration. For example, when someone says something that upsets you, instead of immediately reacting or snapping back, mindfulness allows you to take a step back. You notice your emotional surge, but choose to observe it passively without acting on it immediately. This space that mindfulness creates is not just calming, it's empowering. It gives you the chance to choose a response that you won't regret later. Let's talk about how to incorporate mindfulness into daily life, because it sounds great in theory, but it's in the practice that the real magic happens. One simple technique is to focus on your breathing. When you find yourself feeling anxious or angry, take a moment to concentrate on deep, slow breaths. This focus pulls your mind away from the triggers of stress or anger and brings you back to what you can control, your breath. Another practical method is what I like to call mindful observation. Choose an ordinary task or moment, like drinking a cup of coffee. Focus all your senses on this experience. Notice the aroma, the heat of the cup in your hands, the taste. This practice of engaging fully with the present moment can transform an ordinary experience into a richer, more textured moment. What's fascinating about this is that it trains your brain to apply the same level of awareness to more challenging situations. When anger or frustration arises, you'll be better equipped to handle it with the same focus and calm. Stoicism also teaches us about the impermanence of our experiences. Nothing lasts forever, not even our emotions. Mindfulness complements this by helping us to experience our feelings without judgment. Acknowledge that you're angry, recognize it, but also remind yourself that this anger is just a passing state. It's not who you are, and it doesn't control you unless you let it. Lesson number four, accept impermanence. 
The idea that everything changes and nothing lasts forever is a universal truth that can help us navigate life's ups and downs with more grace and less frustration. It's about understanding that our circumstances, emotions and even our thoughts are constantly in flux and learning to embrace this constant state of change rather than resisting it. Think about how often we get upset because things didn't go as planned. Maybe it was a job promotion that didn't come through, a relationship that ended unexpectedly, or a sudden change in our health. Our first reaction might be to resist these changes, to get angry or sad. But Stoicism invites us to look at these situations differently through the lens of impermanence. When we truly grasp that nothing is permanent, we start to realize that our anger or disappointment is also temporary. This doesn't diminish the importance of our feelings, but gives us a more balanced perspective on them. Embracing impermanence allows us to live more in the present and worry less about the past and the future. If you know that everything is temporary, you begin to appreciate your experiences and the people around you more deeply. You don't take things for granted because you're aware that circumstances can change at any moment. This awareness can be incredibly freeing. It reduces the sting of negative events and enhances the joy of positive ones. Now, how do we practice accepting impermanence in daily life? Start by reflecting on the transient nature of your surroundings and experiences. For example, watch how the seasons change, observe how your feelings shift throughout the day, or how your relationships evolve over time. These observations can be reminders that change is the only constant. Another way to integrate this into your life is by adjusting how you respond to disruptions or unexpected changes. Instead of reacting with frustration when something doesn't go your way, take a moment to acknowledge that this change is part of a bigger flow of life. It's an opportunity to adapt and grow. Think about a time when something didn't work out as you had hoped, and then something better came along. Often, it's only in hindsight that we see how these changes were beneficial. Stoicism doesn't just ask us to accept impermanence, it encourages us to find strength in it. Each change and ending is a chance to practice resilience and flexibility. By fostering this mindset, we not only cope with life's challenges more effectively, but also learn to move through them with a sense of peace and anticipation for what's next. Lesson number five, understand your emotions. The Stoics believed that becoming aware of the root causes of our emotions could lead to greater self-mastery. When we understand our emotions, we are better equipped to respond to life's challenges in ways that are aligned with our values and goals, rather than simply reacting out of habit or impulse. Every emotion we experience, whether it's anger, joy, sadness or fear, is triggered by our perceptions of the world around us. For example, if you feel angry when someone interrupts you while speaking, it's worth exploring why. Is it because you feel disrespected? Or perhaps it reflects a deeper insecurity about your voice being heard. By digging into these questions, you can begin to understand not just your reactions, but also the beliefs and values that underlie them. This understanding is crucial because it gives you the opportunity to change your perceptions and, consequently, the way you feel. Stoicism teaches us that our emotions are predicated on our judgments. The good news is that judgments can be examined and changed. So when you feel a strong emotion, try to step back and ask yourself, what am I believing right now? Is this belief true? Is it helpful? This kind of questioning can be very powerful. It allows you to shift your perspective and choose a different emotional response, one that serves you better. For instance, if you're feeling anxious about a work presentation, it might be because you believe that you must perform perfectly in order to be respected. But is this really true? Likely, your colleagues value your effort and sincerity more than perfection. Recognizing this can alleviate some of your anxiety and help you approach the situation with more calmness and confidence. Practically speaking, 
journaling can be an incredibly effective tool for understanding your emotions. By writing down what you feel and exploring why you feel it, you can uncover patterns and triggers that you might not be aware of otherwise. This reflection not only helps in the moment, but also builds a sort of emotional intelligence over time that can make you more resilient and adaptable. Another approach is to discuss your feelings with someone you trust, a friend, a family member, or a mentor. Speaking about your emotions can provide new insights and perspectives that you might not have considered. It's often through dialogue that we come to new understandings about ourselves and our relationships. Embracing the stoic approach to emotions isn't about suppressing what you feel. On the contrary, it's about engaging with your emotions in a proactive and reflective way. It's about taking control of the narrative of your inner life. By understanding your emotions, you're not just reacting to the world, you're actively shaping your experience of it. Lesson number six, develop patience. Stoicism teaches us the value of patience, not just as a way to endure, but as a method to transform our experiences. Patience, according to Stoic philosophy, isn't just about waiting. It's about how we behave while we wait. It's about maintaining our composure and dignity in the face of life's delays and challenges, understanding that these are often outside our control. In our daily lives, we encounter countless situations that can trigger impatience, from a slow-moving line at the grocery store to a traffic jam or a delayed response from a colleague. Our first instinct might be to feel irritated or stressed, but here's where stoicism comes into play. It encourages us to see these moments as opportunities to practice virtue. Every instance of delay is a chance to exercise patience, to reinforce our ability to stay calm and collected. So, how can we develop patience in practical terms? One effective approach is to adjust our expectations. Often, our impatience stems from a mismatch between our expectations and reality. If we start by acknowledging that delays and obstacles are natural parts of life, we're less likely to get upset when they occur. This doesn't mean lowering our standards, but rather aligning our expectations with the fact that the world won't always operate according to our preferences. Another key method is to use the moments of waiting as opportunities for growth and reflection. If you're stuck in traffic, instead of fuming over the delay, you can turn it into a valuable time. Listen to an audiobook, practice deep breathing, or simply reflect on your day. This shift in perspective turns a frustrating situation into a productive or relaxing one. Practicing mindfulness is also a powerful ally in developing patience. By being present in the moment and fully engaging with it, we can distance ourselves from the feelings of urgency and restlessness that often accompany waiting. Mindfulness helps us cultivate a peaceful state of mind that buffers us against the stirrings of impatience. Stoicism not only advocates for patience, but also for understanding the impermanence of our current state. Remembering that this too shall pass can help us endure unpleasant situations. Whether it's waiting for a delayed flight or enduring a long recovery from an illness, the knowledge that it is temporary makes it more bearable. Finally, celebrating small victories is crucial in developing patience. When you manage to stay calm during a situation that would normally make you impatient, acknowledge and reward yourself for this achievement. This reinforces the behavior and makes it more likely to become a habit. Lesson number seven, practice forgiveness. This is one of those transformative experiences that not only changes the way we relate to others, but also profoundly affects our inner peace. Forgiveness, in the stoic sense, is not about condoning wrongdoings or forgetting the harm done. It's about freeing ourselves from the emotional burden that comes from carrying grudges. Forgiveness requires a strong sense of self-awareness and control over one's emotions, qualities that Stoics strive to develop. It involves recognizing that our anger and hurt 
while natural and valid responses to perceived injustices are ultimately within our control. This doesn't mean that the process is simple or immediate. Forgiveness can be challenging. It often requires a deliberate, concerted effort to let go of deep-seated feelings of injustice. Consider the power that comes from deciding not to allow someone else's actions to disturb your inner tranquility. This is the essence of Stoic forgiveness. It's about making a conscious choice to not let past actions continually affect your present state of mind. This decision helps you reclaim your emotional energy and focus it on more constructive pursuits that align with your values and goals. Now, how do we start practicing forgiveness in everyday life? It begins with the recognition that all humans are fallible, ourselves included. We all make mistakes, sometimes out of ignorance, sometimes out of malice. Reflecting on our own shortcomings can help us develop empathy towards others, making it easier to forgive. Another stoic practice is to consider the bigger picture. Often the things we hold on to are not as significant in the grand scheme of our lives. By focusing on our long-term well-being, which is bolstered by peace and harmony, the immediate sting of grievances can be mitigated. Practicing forgiveness also involves actively reframing our narratives. Instead of viewing yourself as a victim, which can perpetuate feelings of anger and helplessness, try to see yourself as a survivor or even a hero of your story, one who has overcome challenges and emerged stronger. This shift in perspective not only facilitates forgiveness, but also empowers you in your life's journey. Moreover, engaging in meditation or mindfulness exercises can assist in the process. These practices help calm the mind and provide the space needed to process emotions more rationally and less reactively. As you sit quietly and focus on your breath, allow thoughts of forgiveness to enter your mind, picturing those you feel have wronged you and imagine sending them thoughts of goodwill. This doesn't mean you accept the wrong, but you are choosing to release its hold over you. Finally, it's important to understand that forgiveness is a process, sometimes a lengthy one. It doesn't happen all at once, and that's perfectly okay. Each step towards forgiveness, no matter how small, is a step towards a freer, more emotionally balanced life. Lesson number eight, practice self-control. At its essence, self-control allows us to pause before reacting, giving us the time to consider whether our impulses align with our long-term goals. For instance, if you're trying to lead a healthier lifestyle, self-control is what helps you choose not to eat that late-night junk food. In emotional situations, self-control helps you hold back a harsh word or an angry reply, preserving relationships and maintaining peace of mind. How can we strengthen this essential skill? One effective stoic practice is to regularly reflect on our actions and their consequences. This could be as simple as taking a few minutes each evening to think about the choices you made throughout the day. Were there moments when you lacked self-control? What triggered it? Understanding these patterns is the first step towards managing them. Another powerful technique is to set clear personal rules for behavior based on your values. Stoicism teaches us that living according to rational principles is key to a good life. By setting and following your own rules, for example, not checking your phone during meals or limiting time spent on social media, you exercise self-control in ways that directly improve your daily life and well-being. Visualization is another tool that can be incredibly helpful. Before entering a situation where you know you might be tempted to act impulsively, take a moment to visualize yourself handling the situation with calm and restraint. Imagine the satisfaction you'll feel from acting in accordance with your principles. This mental rehearsal can make it much easier to keep your cool in the heat of the moment. It's also beneficial to gradually increase your tolerance for discomfort, which is a big part of what self-control is all about. The Stoics believed that by voluntarily exposing ourselves to discomfort, whether it's cold showers, fasting, or resisting urges, we can strengthen our willpower. 
these practices teach us that we can endure discomfort and that it's often not as bad as we fear. This realization directly feeds into our ability to exercise self-control in more complex emotional or social situations. Lastly, remember that practicing self-control is a journey, not a destination. There will be times when you falter. That's just part of being human. What matters is that you recognize these moments, learn from them, and continue to strive for improvement. Each act of self-control, no matter how small, is a victory in its own right and a step towards becoming a wiser, more balanced person. Thank you for joining me today at Stoic Journal. Remember, every step towards mastering your emotions is a step towards a more peaceful life.